how you guys doing? Um, I told you I was going to have something special for you guys coming up. And, um, these are some videos that I have from um, a guy I follow on Instagram called uh, Modern Biology. Very interesting. Um, so just enjoy the videos, like, subscribe, and I have a little um, explanation towards the end. So buckle up. Here we go. Yeah, so um, that was from Modern Biology, and he's a guy I follow on Instagram. Also, I follow on, um, I subscribe to him on YouTube. I suggest you all subscribe to him too. Um, he has more videos, but they don't they don't really uh, show what I just showed you guys. Um, most of the videos are like records that he makes because he's actually like uh, an international DJ or something. And I love the fact that he he actually uses the the electric frequencies that are coming off of the plants to hook up to a synthesizer and the pulses the electromagnetic pulses that are coming off of the plants are actually making a signal to the synthesizer and i just had to pull up this wikipedia article just to it better explains it um what's going on there and it actually it actually uh, sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it confirms for me some ideas that I have about plants and how important they really are to the ecosystem. And um, you know, it really kind of reminds me of that scene from, um, from Avatar. Those trees were sacred to you. I can't imagine. You know what? You throw a stick in the air around here. It's going to land on some sacred earth. I'm not talking about some kind of pagan voodoo here. I'm talking about something real, something measurable in the biology of the forest. Which is what exactly? What we think we know is that there's some kind of electrochemical communication between the roots of the trees, like the synapses between the roots. And each tree has 10 to the fourth connections to the trees on the earth. And there are 10 to the 12th trees on the earth. And this is an actual thing. Um, I'll make a new another video um, later on in the week about maybe tomorrow actually um, about the rhizosphere. Um, this is what's going on in the rhizosphere. It's a uh, it's a complex um, relationship between the fungal the fungal world that's growing on the on the forest floor and underneath the forest floor and um, there's this symbiotic relationship between bigger trees and smaller trees and this fungal network that runs all through the ground and 
the thing about this that's exciting for me is that you get to actually understand that plants are really living things. They're, like we, we think of life only from our own perspective. And honestly, the greatest form of life on this planet, or one of the greatest forms of life, is plant life. And uh, like this article says, it says, uh, what the guy in the video is doing is called plant bioacoustics. And uh, plant bioacoustics refers to the creation of sound waves by plants. Measure sound emissions by plants as well as differential germination rates, growth rates, and volatile chemicals, light detection. Oh, excuse me, I actually skipped the line. Uh, behavioral modifications in response to sound are well documented. Okay. Plants detect neighbors by means other than well established communicative signals, including volatile chemicals. This is uh, the chemical reactions that's going on in the stems and in the leaves themselves. Um, <clears throat> I actually watched a really good video um, from Perfect Gardens was actually um, he was actually talking to a group of his buddies and they were talking about this this um, farming that the plant does with bacteria that, that the plants themselves sort of create a bacterial environment in the root zone so that it can actually help with the sugars and help with the, the gathering of nutrients in the soils and things like that. So I really find that very interesting. Um, like I said, it's plant detect neighbors by means other than well-established communicable signals, including volatile chemical light detection. Now, this is something I've been told by other growers that um, the plants actually know how much light they're getting based on other plants around them. They can feel the light being absorbed by other plants and so what they'll do I've actually seen my bean sprouts do it I've seen some of my other um, cannabis plants and even um, <clears throat> my lettuce I've seen that do it <clears throat> where it will literally <clears throat> snake its way into the light it will literally uh, for the bean sprouts any vine type plant it will find the tallest plant that's close by and it will just go up it and make its home there to reach that light um, so light detection is a way that they communicate in direct contact and group signals. Now this is where the wiser sphere comes from, uh, well, where it comes into play because um, the roots are in communication with each other. And like the movie said, it's like synapses in your brain, it's thousands, millions of thousands of trillions of synapses just firing off at once in one brain. And imagine your brain communicating with someone else's brain in that fast, rapid response. This is what the trees are doing um, when they're uptaking water. If there's a plant nearby that's not getting enough sunlight. What will happen in the rhizosphere is that the plant that's getting too much sunlight will actually divert the nutrients that it's getting when it has too many nutrients. It will divert it through the rhizosphere to the other plants and they will also help that plant um, continue its growth. It's, it's a weird and complex relationship that these plants have with each other. I'm not going to try and get too much into this because I really, I really am not um, well versed in this plant biology, the, um, the, the plant bioacoustics, but I'm going to run down here. Okay. Due to hormones and genes expressed in the petals of the flower, the, the transport of sugar into the nectar was increased by 20%, giving it a higher concentration that compared to the nectar of flowers that were exposed to higher frequencies or no sound at all. So this is something that I do with my own plants. I play music sometimes with my plants um, just because I've heard my entire life. You sing to your plants, you talk to your plants, it helps them grow. Um, and this can go into, you know, uh, cymatic theory where, you know, sound actually creates shapes um, and it gives form. Sound actually gives form in the universal spectrum. It's a, it's a very crazy relationship because it all goes hand in hand. Everything seems to work together in this synchronicity that is, to me, amazing. I love finding stuff like this about
out about um, no plants and everything. Um, right, pedal velocity was shown in response to a honeybee and moth sound signal, as well as low frequency feedbacks, but not high frequency feedbacks. Sugar concentrations of nectar was measured before and after the plants were exposed to sound. Significant increase in sugar concentration was only observed when a low frequency, similar to bee wing bats, and B sounds were played. So I'm going to experiment with that um, with some of my music, see if I can tap in some of those lower frequencies, see if that will have any effect on my plants. Uh, that's a whole nother experiment for another time. But yeah, I, I really, I like this this whole idea. You can find an article that I'm reading, of course, on Wikipedia. And please go check this man's channel out. Um, it's Modern Biology. Not remember his IG tag, but I'll 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 post the link in the note for him. Um, not in the note for him, but in the description. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm really taken aback by the fact that this is now becoming not science fiction anymore, science fact, where we know that these mechanisms are taking place in the root zone, and this isn't even including the relationship between the microbiology within the root zone and there's so much more for us to learn not just about cannabis and hemp but also about um, every plant that we grow so um, I encourage you all to you know go over to Modern Biology's channel here on YouTube check out some of his videos leave him a like subscribe um, and of course I'll ask you to do the same thing for me and yeah I think that's all I have for you today um, Hopefully, in the next day or two, I can have up another video explaining more about the rising sphere. And um, yeah, I enjoyed this, and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Happy going.